All right, so you're ready to hear what the essay prompts are for the Common Application. Uh, the Common App Company already uh, revealed, uh, confirmed, that uh, these are the, the prompts for the class of 2021. Um, yes, they were used uh, for the current seniors applying to college. Um, they were a little bit changed from the year before, uh, but now these are it. These are the confirmed prompts. So uh, if, you, if you have answer one of these uh, and have a polished essay in the coming months, uh, you can use it for every Common App College for the main essay. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at what these prompts are. Uh, the first one is, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application wouldn't be uh, complete without it. So if this sounds like you, share your story. That's number one. Number seven, uh, to me, really similar. Uh, share an, please uh, share an essay on any topic of your choice. Uh, it can be something you've already written or responds to a different prompt or something of your own design. So to me, two out of the seven essays are pretty open-ended. They're kind of write whatever you want. So if you're that person who just really can't find an, a prompt in uh, numbers two through six to fit the story you've wanted to tell that you're interested in writing about, uh, that's great. Common App allows for that. The colleges who use Common App are happy uh, if, if your essay answers one or, or seven, seven being topic of your choice of any structure you want. So uh, that's great for those of you who ha already know what they have to say and it really doesn't fit any of the other topics. Okay, not everybody can write like that. Uh, some people just give me something to write about and then I can handle writing about it. Okay, fine. So let's take a look at the, the ones that are more substantial, um, pinpointed uh, prompts. Um, the Number two, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Um, recount a time when you've uh, faced a challenge, a setback or failure. How did it affect you? Um, and what did you learn from the experience? So you definitely, if you pick this, have to answer all parts of that question. Yes, you tell the story. Yes, maybe a quarter to a third of the, the space you're writing with um, can, it will, will be about the, the obstacle, about the, the, thing you, the challenge you face, the thing, the thing you're writing about. But, but really have to two-thirds of the essay needs to be how you reacted to it, what you did in the moment and what you learned um, sort of in the big picture in a generalized way uh, to how you approach life after that or uh, how you um, have changed your, your, your philosophy or maybe not that big of a change. Uh, maybe it's more like after overcoming this obstacle and dealing it with the way you did, you, you'll change uh, small things about how you behave or how you approach problems. So, um, so you're definitely going to tell the story uh, in using this prompt about the, about the setback, about the obstacle, the challenge, um, but, uh, but you, know, you, you, you need to talk about what effect, how it affected you. I don't think this is a good prompt for students who have unwonderful grades, have inconsistent academic record. If you look at your transcript from your grades from 9th grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade, if you're a little all over the place and they're inconsistent, I'm not sure being vulnerable about a failure is really a good tactic. I, I kind of feel like writing about a failure is for students who have very nice clean record and and there's really nothing in there that that illustrates that you can overcome something that was really challenging for you or really hard even if you take really hard classes how does anyone reading your application know that those classes were really really hard for you although they probably weren't that hard for you I mean you were taking them you did well in them so I think it's healthy for someone who has very good grades across the board to be vulnerable and pick a, an essay like number two, a topic that will show that they don't crumble, you know, at the first sign of, of a problem or of a challenge or something. They don't perfect from the very first minute of trying it. That's, that's what I think this prompt uh, is good for. All right, number three, what's the third uh, 
little prompt here. Reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking and what was the outcome? You challenged or questioned a belief or idea. You're not talking about, oh, I, you know, did a better job of, you know, organizing a club than everybody else. You didn't challenge a belief. You just kind of logistically helped. They're talking about big picture ideas and philosophies or beliefs in your heart, faith. I'm not sure how many high school kids have actually done this, number three. So if it's you, if you're like, oh yeah, I there's a big thing that I'm completely thinking about that this essay is absolutely asking about, you really should pick this prompt. I don't get the sense a lot of students use this prompt. In my experience, not a lot. I haven't even read a lot of essays um, that answer this prompt compared to the other ones on the list. So to me, if this sounds like you, you got to go for it. Um, if it doesn't really sound like you, this would be a very difficult prompt, I think, to fake it, to fud, not fake, but like to stretch an idea that, oh, it kind of fits a little bit. I can sort of use it for number three. It's not going to come across as genuine. I just, I don't know. Or it's not going to be a big challenge to a true belief or idea. I don't know. So if it sounds like you, go for it. If it's not, I, I don't know. I would put your energy in another prompt. Um, number four, describe a problem uh, you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. It can be intellectual challenge, research query, ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the scale. Explain the significance to you and what steps you, t uh, you took to or could be taken um, to identify a solution. So they're not saying you have to have already solved the thing. They just want your ideas about how to solve the thing. So you can't propose that there's a big issue or a problem, but not have any idea how to fix it, you need to have some brainy ideas how to fix it. If you use this topic, um, you can you are going to very specifically remember choose it. When you're filling out the common application, you get to the essay part, you have to tell the common app, you enter into the system, which prompt you're answering. So when you click on number four, they know which one you're answering. This is not, tell us about your personality and a background to your, no, this is an intellectual topic. You are choosing this deliberately and they will read it with the, the uh, with, through the lens of this is an intellectual, you know, thoughtful piece of writing. Um, if you choose to uh, write uh, this prompt, number four, um, and it's, it's related directly to uh, an academic subject matter, even loosely, um, you know, whether it's chemistry or biology or environmental science, something in business, anthropology, English, history, math, wh whatever it is that you write about, um, your college counselor absolutely can be helpful in uh, getting the essay that you write to be very clear to someone who is not an expert in that subject area, you know, like the admission reps. Um, you don't really know what majors they all were, but you have to share this essay also with a teacher in that subject area. It's very important that what you're saying is accurate. <laughs> if you talk about a book, it's got to be very grounded in, in the actual piece of literature. If you talk about a scientific theory or historical concept or anything like that, the nature of it has to be accurate. Um, college counselor, I don't know. I'm not sure I would know if you, you know, wrote about a, a theorem for math. Um, I think I could follow it and I could tell you if it's easy to understand, but um, it's got to be, you know, a Mr. Melendez or, I don't know, like Miss Longshore to sit with you and make sure that it's accurate. Um, to me, that, that's a responsible way to pick this topic and, and how to treat it properly. Uh, so, so, yeah, this is definitely brainy. Um, number five is discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself and others. Again, this is going to be a little bit like number two. We learn from obstacles and we grow from them. How did you change after a failure? This is very similar, only it's absolutely not a failure. This is any, like it said, period of personal growth, something that sparked. It could be an event like it references or a realization. Um, sometimes they happen a little bit over time. Um, thing about number uh, five, I think that this is 
something pretty much every student could write about. I don't see how you can't pinpoint a time when you feel like, oh yeah, I was more mature after that happened, or I, I grew intellectually or academically or as a person or whatever. Um, you, you experience growth um, after, after something happened or, or, or a series of things happened. So pretty much all students could write about this. So that's interesting. Um, that, might, that might help you know you if you're not really sure what to write about. This is a good one, I think, five. Um, the other thing I think about this uh, prompt is that, again, like number two, yes, you talk about the time, the thing, the event that sparked change, but half to two-thirds of the essay has to be afterward. Who are you now? How does it change your perspective of your life going into college, going into life later? Uh, things like this. Um, it can be multi-layered. You don't have to say there was one single event if there is a cluster of related events, um, but they have to be very related. Uh, they can't be loosely related. Different types of growth you've had. No, they need to be all very tightly related to um, a particular way you've grown. Okay, um, and then this is number six. Uh, de describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Uh, why does it captivate you? What uh, or who uh, do you turn to when you want to learn more? So again, like number four, brainy, intellectual, potentially. Um, it could be that if you're a really strong student, you don't want to go too academic with this answer. You want it to be, you want it to be a little lighter. You want it to be a little more, I don't know, a smaller part of who you are, some quirky topic or pet thing, pet concept you have. Um, if you don't have the strongest grades on the planet, I would not find an, an answer to this that isn't brainy. Um, I think you you would it would be a mistake to you know find some small quirky thing about yourself and really write about it in a loving way and you know with a lot of excitement and and uh, you know the lose track of time. You get all you know excited and giddy thinking about this topic. You really nerd out. But if it's not an intellectual thing, it's gonna make the person looking at your entire application worry that you're never serious and that you never roll up your sleeves and, and do traditional academic subject areas. Um, so that, that number six could, could go a few different directions. Any way you'd like, the, the, the essay prompt per, uh, will support whichever direction you go. But I, it, you know, it, think about it in the context of the rest of your application and how someone looking at your whole profile is gonna, gonna need to see something uh, in this essay that isn't shown anywhere else, isn't really revealed in the rest of the application. So that's one through seven. One and seven feel a little open, pretty open topic. Um, two through six, a little more specific. Um, so, uh, Anything you, you write can certainly fit these prompts, and anything you write um, is supposed to stay within 650 words or fewer. I, I don't think getting to 650 or 649 uh, is anybody's goal. I don't think a writer should be <laughs> have the goal of getting to the end, end to the maximum. I don't think any of the readers, admission reps out there, really need to hear that many words from you unless it's warranted by your topic and by your treatment of your topic. As long as you hit 500 20 something or approaching 550 you're fine you've done enough uh, don't stop in the 300s that's too short of an essay even early 400s but as long as you pass five plus 500 plus words don't feel the pressure to go all the way to uh, 650 so um, yeah when it comes to the coalition application essay prompts uh, there are five of those they definitely overlap with these um, write the common application one my recommendation and just write a, sh a little bit shorter of a version, 600 is the maximum words the coalition gives, write a little bit shorter of a version for that one. And it's funny, sometimes students will think about 650 as their max. They shorten their final essay into a six to fit the 600 max for Common App for one of their colleges, and they end up liking the shorter version better and changing their Common App essay to, to be the shorter one because it's just a little more succinct, a little tighter, it flows a little better. So. That's, uh, that's it. Those are the prompts for the main essay. Hopefully you write one of those and every college you apply to will read it.